on the front line of filth this week. What are we supposed to do? View the council! The enforcement officers calling time on a dumped caravan in Malvern. Right, we're going to get the police down here, all right? This is the worst possible situation. The extreme cleaners in Walsall have a job <coughs> that takes a lot of bottle. The people, the wee in the bottles and everything. And on call with the sewage busters... Can I get a gas reading, please? ..as they battle a deadly blockage beneath the streets of London. 3% NEL on b We're abandoning the survey. Enforcement officer Jude... I don't know why they can't use their... their own bins to put it in. ..takes no prisoners when it comes to fly tippers. I think people who fly tip are the scum of the earth. Okay. Jude's patch in Malvern and these historic hills are under threat. We live in an area of outstanding natural beauty. You don't want a big fly tip of, of builder's waste or household rubble, rubbish, just dumped on those hills. Jude and her partner in grime, Dan, are getting ready for their first call out of the week. OK, so we've had a fly tip come in on Pixham Ferry Lane, oh, our favourite spot. Before they hit the road, Dan gives the clean machine a once-over. Well, I take a lot of pride of the job. I've enjoyed it from day one. It's different every day. You never know quite what you're going to see. We are passionate about what we do, myself and Jude. All systems down. Wonderful. The worst yeah, fly tip I've ever been to, you wouldn't even get out of the van. Oh, that was the, was the like... dead body in the fridge. It turned out it wasn't a dead body, it was just some rotting meat. <laughs> yeah. Nearly 30 years ago, the Environmental Protection Act of 1990 made it illegal to dump rubbish in an unauthorised place and coined the phrase fly tipping. Looks like just general household stuff, There's bits of rotten food in there, some used nappies. Not the most pleasant fly tip to go rooting through. Last year, there were nearly a million fly tips in England alone. Let's have a look to see what's in here. That's 2,700 crimes every single day. The crime scene, yeah. Grime scene. <laughs> For Jude and Dan, it's not just about clearing the rubbish, it's about nailing those responsible. If they can dig up any evidence, it could lead to a conviction. OK, we've got... Somebody's card details, and we've got a na an invoice by, we've got a name, all sorts of things on there. You should get a, a picture of that in situ, Jude. Yeah. I think um, we've got enough ID, Jude, to be honest. Yeah, is that enough? Um, have you got that evidence bag that we can just pop it all in? Yeah. For these two, it's a monster battle. Luckily, Ooh. I've got a knife <laughs> to kill the dragon. Ah! <laughs> Jude and Dan will follow up their clues at HQ. All right, let's go. It's a challenge, You're trying to find the baddies to take some action against, investigating things. But first, they're on their way to a local beauty spot that's been the ugly scene of an ongoing legal battle for several months. It's just horrible. I mean, it stinks. There's human excrement, there's just rubbish, there's rotting food over there. It's not, not a nice place. Whilst the enforcers clean up our rubbish-strewn landscapes, when the filth is hidden behind closed doors... Oh, that's too much. ..it falls to a legion of brave cleaners. That pungent smell, that's faeces. ..to get the job done. In the West Midlands, Wayne manages over 1,000 tenants and one of them has upped and left, but not without leaving behind a rancid reminder of his residency. This tenant has left it in a really nasty state. There's fag ash, there's broken CDs, there's empty pop bottles. I can see bottles of strange yellow stuff, which I assume is urine. There's just a splash of just craziness in here. But this is a shock. With a grime scene such as this... It is stinking in here. There are only two men that Wayne knows are up for the job. Meet Jacob and Wojtek. We've got bottles of pee, we've got ash and, and cigarettes everywhere, we've got dirty bedding. 
Okay, if you could uh, carry on with the job, I'll see you in a couple of hours. Thanks, guys. These Polish warriors have stomachs of steel and are not easily phased. It's disgusting. It's bad. It's bad. Yeah. He was druggy. Very old rubbish milk. It's disgusting. <laughs> It takes a lot to give these boys a shock. <coughs> I don't believe it, Mao. But a cupboard full of stale urine <coughs> is enough to take even their breath away. Piss smell is really, really bad. <coughs> bad. That's not the first time. I see the piss in the room, the people with the wee in the bottles and everything. I even see the people do poof in the bags and throw it away through the window and everything. When it comes to extracting the urine, the boys just have to go with the flow. I was feeling very sick in there. It was, you know, wee everywhere, loads of rubbish and everything. This is one job that Jacob will be glad to see the back of. I hope that then I'm not going to have more jobs like that today. But the cleaning duo are in for an even bigger shock on their next call out. 50 miles away in Malvern, the harmonious heroes of the grime scene are heading to their next job. No excuse for fly tipping. No excuse for fly tipping. No excuse for fly tipping. Keep our district tidy. Yeah. Yeah. And this particular job has become something of an obsession. Six months ago, Jude and Dan were called out to an abandoned caravan. Go and see if that caravan's still there. They're supposed to have removed it by now. Someone's one-time holiday home now turned into an illegal drug den. Look out for needles, Dan. Yep. Jude and Dan are determined to get rid of the illegally squatted caravan. Hello! And the people who use needles here. So it doesn't look like anybody's been back. Have you got the sharps box, please? It's possibly something here, a needle. We don't need that sort of thing lying about, so we'll pop that for disposal properly. It's just got worse and worse. It's just horrible. I mean, it, it stinks. There's human excrement, there's just rubbish, there's rotting food over there. Pretty grim stuff, really. You'd hate for somebody to pick something up that they shouldn't have. It's not, not a nice place. This mobile home takes trailer trash to a whole new level. There's always the threat that there might be somebody actually in the caravan. I'd be proper scared if there's someone behind there now. But you wouldn't want to be sleeping in here, would you? But the landowner has been told he's been given a community protection notice and he should have removed the caravan. He's gone past the date now of which he had to do it, so we'll take it through to the next stage, which, which will probably be a court appearance for him. For us, it's not quick enough, because we, we want it gone now. This may upset the happy campers currently enjoying Britain's filthiest caravan park, but for the Malvern enforcers, the battle is far from over. Keeping on top of Britain's mountains of waste is a round-the-clock job. It has to be, otherwise we would never get it cleared. It's a good team effort down here. While most of us are sleeping, there's an army of sewage-busting warriors. It's endless. So by the time we actually finish it, all have started again. Who tackle over 300,000 block drains in the UK every year. stop them exploding back up into our homes. That's the problem. People don't look after the drains. People don't look after what they put down the toilet. It's daybreak in Surrey, and as the Thames Water night shift crew wind down... I wash and Milton tablets, please. Blockbusters Craig and Rob are getting ready for their shift. 
Uh, my missus signed me up to the job originally. I turned up to the interview, and when they told me it was to do with human waste, I wasn't too happy about it. My first two weeks, wasn't too sure if I was going to stay. I couldn't cope with the smell. Three hours, four years down the line, she hates it, and I really quite enjoy it. When something hits the fan... Oh, thanks, honey. It's these boys that roll up their sleeves and get stuck in. People think, cos it's sewage, that's the worst part, but it's just one of them jobs. People have got to do it the same as a bin man. A job's a job. They've been called out to probe a blockage in an effluent area of Guildford. I was in the yard at six. Why was you in the yard at six? I thought I had the lorry loaded up for you. That's it. That's what you're there for. Not just a pretty face. It costs around £100 million a year to clear block drains, and it's usually down to one thing. Wet wipes. They're a pain in the arse. No one uses them, though. No. That's what customers will tell you. They never use a wet wipe, they've never flushed a wet wipe, but they do. Normally, one rod sort of clears them if they're in the mouth of the pipe. What's up there? That's it. Job over. Blockage cleared. Or is it? A little CCTV machine. Just go down there, check the condition of the pipe. Wet wipes are often just the tip of the berg. Wow. Look that there. It's full of fat. 90% fat. It's estimated we pour over 17 million litres of cooking fat down our drains every year. Literally pouring their chip fat fire down the sink to change the oil. And our increasingly irresponsible disposal of all this grease means that so-called fatbergs are a growing problem across the UK. And that's the outcome of it. This mini fatberg is halfway down the street, so Craig and Rob will need to flush it out from the next manhole. Ready? Just double checking the line now to see what the issue is still. That's pure fat at the top of the pipe. Coming on. Lump of fat. When it comes off like that, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> it's right now, it's all cleared out. With a street full of toilets now back in action. Because some of them could be a pain in the arse, you'll be there for hours. The residents can uncross their legs and breathe a sigh of relief. Job done. This job may be over, but the boys are about to face a blockage so backed up, it's about to explode into the homes of a South London estate. That's what we've got to work with at the minute. We get it outside as well to come all the way up to the top of the drain. Back in Malvern, Jude and Dan are also having issues with faecal waste of the canine kind. But it provides good material for this tuneful twosome. Dan, what would you like to say to people who fly tip and litter and uh, leave dog poo all around? If you've got a doggy, you, you need, need a poo, poo bag. bag. If you got a doggy, you, you need, need a poo, poo bag. bag. If you got, got a doggy, doggy, you need a poo bag to keep, keep our, our district, district clean. clean. Woo! Genius. The enforcers are in high spirits today, as this could be their final visit to the caravan of filth. We're wasted, Jude. We're wasted. <laughs> Four months ago, legal proceedings were issued to the landowner, but he refused to cooperate and remove the caravan. Sharp spin. Hello? Just coming up just to make sure that there's nobody in it. It looks like, actually, something's changed about it, because there's a piece of toll pawling over it, which wasn't there last time. It's looking a little bit messy here. Yeah, I think it's messier. Yeah. They've got a needle on the floor. This one is a new one since last time we were here. So there's obviously people still coming to this site. Ah. Someone may be living here, but Dan and Jude have never met them. But you've got to be quite um, desperate and sad yeah. to be living in there. And whilst the wheels of justice turned slowly, Jude and Dan were determined to keep the site as safe as they could. Well, this has been going on for months and months and months and months now. It a massive weight off our shoulders when this has been removed, so we won't have to keep coming down here. Looking and for needles. Looking at needles, and I've just seen another one, so I'm just going to grab that one. But today's the day things might change. At 3pm, Jude goes up against the owner at Worcester Magistrates Court. 
If he does turn up, then he'll have the chance to explain himself. If he doesn't show up at all, we'd be asking the magistrate for permission to remove the caravan. The bet in the office is that he's not going to show, but who knows? And it doesn't take long for the magistrate to reach a decision. The landowner didn't turn up. He was fined in his absence, £1,668. Really good result for us. It means that we can go ahead with getting the caravan removed and make the whole area safe. For Jude and Dan, it's finally the end of their caravanning nightmare. As they start the process of restoring the land back to its former beauty, their working day ends on a high. Meanwhile in Guildford, Craig and Rob's day is ending on a low. Not the best one for the last of the day, is it? It's 7 p.m., but there's no clocking off for the bog busters. A giant blockage is creating a massive backflow of sewage that's threatening to explode into homes on the estate. That's what I've got to work with at the minute. Obviously, you can smell the smell anyway, having to you know, light three or four candles as well as you know, different sprays and bleach just to try and get it down. Uh, we get it outside as well to come all the way up to the top of the drain. And it turns out the culprit is a familiar one. Wet wipes. That? All that brown matter there, that's all wipes. Like? Go on, turn the jet on there. Okay. Just trying to beat whatever's up there, to be honest. Just trying to get the jets go a bit further. They don't want to. This time, the jets are no match for the almighty mass of wet wipes. Is that on full pressure? I ain't dying in here, mate. Craig has no choice. It's time to call in the big guns. There's a bit of an issue with this one. I need a tanker to come suck that all out. With toilets backed up all over the estate, it's a race against time to clear the inconvenienced conveniences. This is a shit of this one, this ain't a good one before the residents are left knee-deep in sewage. I'm not sure what the flushing down, we seem to be congregating somewhere here and just backing right up, and these are the houses that seem to be the worst. So the bog busters have sent for reinforcements. Oh, it's a big one, that one, isn't it? One of the biggest suckers in the fleet has arrived. <laughs> along with supervisor, George. The cake on the top of that, that's been blocked for about six months. We used the four inch, I think. Yeah, I'll get it out quicker. Pump it out quicker. You've got about six and a half foot of solid yeah. paper wipes on it. How deep? Right. Three metre. George is equipped with a range of high powered hoses. Right, let's get that pump down. Armed with his trusty four incher, George is tooled up and ready for action. So basically, we've got a whole estate that's up. But now everyone's home from work, everyone's sort of choosing their facilities, everyone's using their toilets, having showers. So obviously, everything's going to start rising up. We ain't got much time left on that. Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> This is half the battle sometimes, is just fat and wet wipes, because they just don't disappear. This is probably up there as probably one of the worst to try and clear. That's flowing, mate. See it? So I'll deal with this now, eh? You take care of it for me, son. Flushed with success, Craig and Rob's long shift is finally over. The blockage is now cleared, but none of us are going to leave until this is empty to make sure that they're all right, basically. <laughs> In Malvern, it's D-Day for Jude and Dan. It's 9.30. And after six months, time's up for the fly tip on wheels. OK, so are we ready? I'm ready. Today is the day when we, uh, the contractor will be on site to remove the van. 
worst possible result would be that there's somebody actually at the van and um, we will then have to call the police for backup. Fingers crossed, there'll be nobody there and we can just get rid of it. Never actually had to seize a caravan before, so it is quite exciting. It's exciting because it's the end of a very long process. I mean, I said, how many times have we been so far and there's not been anyone there? Yeah, and I, I don't... I don't honestly think there's anybody staying there. I think no. they're just using it as a as a place to go and take, take drugs. drugs. So all being well, it'll be empty. Despite the caravan being seemingly uninhabited for months. Right, so let's go and see if there's anyone there, first of all. Cameras on. And a court order in place to remove it. It seems that now the campers have decided Anyone in? to take up residency. No, mate, it's council. It's not the policeman's council, council. You need to remove anything that you've got in the caravan. You're going to see that. Right, we'll talk about that in a minute, but there's a court order to get the caravan removed today. Hey, well, listen, back in, well, listen, 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 What are we supposed to do? I don't know what you're supposed to do. No, but you don't. You're supposed to the council. Yeah, but I don't. I'm not the council in charge of homeless, am I? I'm the council in charge of removing things. Who gives a fuck who you are? Like right, we're going to get the police down here, all right? We'll get the police we'll in, mate. We're waiting for you, but we're not moving yet because you lot won't help us. It may not be her responsibility, but Jude doesn't want to be the one to make these campers homeless. We're enforcement officers. Yeah. Our job is to get rid of get this rid caravan, of caravan and make this site safe. So, yeah, it's a total tug of war all the time friends, about what, sometimes. you know, like my heart says, I'm, I'm one of those people that I want to help everybody. This is where it does get difficult, because you want to do much more, but actually, we're paid to do the enforcement side. They're going to sit in the caravan and stop the contractor removing it. This is the worst possible situation scenario. <laughs> that looks like somebody else going yeah. down there. Yeah. It's like I felt bad enough removing it with uh, nobody there. I feel really bad if we removed it and there are people there. It's going to get proper Larry down here in a minute, I reckon. Dan stops the contractor driving onto site. Whilst Jude gives the housing office a call. We've got a bit of a situation going on. We've turned up with the contractor to remove the caravan and there's two people in it who say that they can't get housing. Is there anything <laughs> that we can do uh, to get them emergency accommodation? OK, cheers then. Bye-bye. Let's go back, see whether the housing team get back in touch with yeah. us have a cup of tea, see what else we can do. That sounds fair enough. So for today, the caravan remains static. Well, that was good fun. And whilst Dan and Jude wait for more news, over in Walsall, there are housing challenges of a different kind for property manager Wayne. A Bilston man was found seriously hurt at a house on Sunday night. Tests are being done to find out how he then died. Even more chillingly, the murder took place in a house that Wayne used to live in. The guy hit another guy over the head repeatedly with a blunt force trauma. That's a new word I learnt. And apparently there was blood everywhere. I've been told that although the police have been in and cleaned up, there is still evidence of the incident. This is the first time Wayne's been allowed back to his former home since the murder took place. This is now starting to uh, begin to make me a little bit nervous. Um, really don't know what I'm going to find. It's, uh, I say scary, but I've got a bit of anticipation going on. This is the house on the right. That is grim. Smells a bit. Let's get my torch on and see what's going on in here. Oh, looks like they've been scrubbing the walls. But if that's the worst of it, I can cope with that. 
Oh, shit. Oh, fucking hell. That's not nice. I don't know what to say, I just... <laughs> that's not good. Let's have a look and see what else they have uh, might have done. I do feel like I'm in the Blair Witch film at the moment. Oh, fuck. Shit, the bed. I've seen plenty of urine bottles and I've seen plenty of beer bottles, but why has it, somebody got so many water bottles? This used to be my bedroom. Plenty of photos of me sitting on my desk uh, against that wall and uh, my, my bed over there. Uh. All I know is that he's been remanded. Um, oh, shit, the bed. That's, that's, I don't know if you saw that, but there's, there's blood or some sort of shit on that. So, no, I'm not going to touch anything more in here because fuck knows what's in here. It's more personal now. It's certainly going to be in the back of my head that this has happened here. What was once Wayne's home is now changed forever. The property will need gutting. Time for Wayne's team to make an entrance. Jacob, Wojtek and Jacob's dad for extra muscle. It was murder, yeah. One of the guys got get killed. Definitely see the worst places than that. Before, I was thinking a lot about how can they live in that state like this. But now, not really. I just go come in and do my job. That's all what I do. As gruesome as the flat might be, at least these bottles aren't full of urine. Empty bottles. What is nice, I like it. Prefer that. But it wouldn't be an extreme clean without at least one nasty surprise. Ah! <laughs> that stinks up. <laughs> There's just lots and lots of rancid, mouldy, every smell under the sun. There's milk, there's rotten fruit, there's just everything. I mean, that is vile. Yeah, this is the first time I've been like a place where somebody gets murdered. It's crazy, but... It's the life. For a tireless task force of grime fighters, it's not a nine to five job. As night falls, there's a serious blockage in one of the major sewage tunnels in South London. It's time to call in the specialists. Meet John. As bizarre as it sounds, I'm actually very proud of what I do. There aren't many of us doing it in the grand scheme of things. John heads up a crack team, sorting out the subterranean sewers of the capital. All right, gather round, don't be shy. All right. Gentlemen, we won't fully know what we're up against until we actually go in there and have a look. We have to enter the sewers, which is extremely hazardous. We literally risk our lives every night to clean out stuff that really should never have been put there in the first place. That'll do. It ranges from jewellery, false teeth, bath toys, guns, knives, ammunition, packets of cash that they've had to dispose of quickly. Um, literally, the list is endless. If it fits, it will be there. Heading into the murky depths with John is Health and Safety Officer Chris. First of all, what hits you is, obviously, it's the stench, which is pretty horrific, to be fair when you've got a mixture of food, fats, oils, greases, it could be white spirit, it could be paints, sanitary products, condoms, all these sort of things that are mixed and sort of create this cocktail of nastiness. Um, it, it's pretty horrendous. Camera all ready to go? Yes. Cool. But yes, not looking forward to this one. Oh, hold your hand, don't worry, <laughs> I'm doing this. <laughs> this pair are sewer connoisseurs. There's one in Nicebridge, which is absolutely lovely. Uh, it's the architecture on some of the ones you go into. The, the um, archways, I've seen, I say statues, um, but figurines inside there. It's very bizarre. But some of it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Time to take a deep breath. Anyway, yeah. Good. All good? Oh, whenever you're ready, happy, mate. Everybody ready? Everybody's ready. Just check the steps on the way down for everyone. 
Fighting this fatberg is a fully immersive experience. Oh, lovely. Absolutely delightful. Right, OK, well, we're off. Chris and John descend into the bowels of London to experience an intoxicating blend of soupy sludge, second-hand dining from the capital's finest. Is everyone all right? All right. Oh, here's the start of some fat. All right, here we go. Welcome to another day in the office. Give me some rats, so we're not alone down here. <laughs> Nobody wants to be alone. Starting to see a lot of uh, sanitary products now. Some wet wipes. Yeah. Nappies, feces. Oh, wow, yeah, certainly getting a lot deeper now. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, yeah. So this is, would you say this is the beginning of the potential fat folks? It's certainly well on its way. The boys are now wading through a river of potentially deadly fat. Disturbing it could lead to the release of a cocktail of noxious gases trapped in layers of grease and grime. Can I have a gas reading when you're ready, please. Gas mono readings are 20.9000. Like a high tech canary in a coal mine, the team use a special alarm to alert them if they're exposed to lethal gases. Is everyone all right down there? Yeah, let's just have a breather. As a top man, you just got to just constantly keep asking them, asking them if they're all right, you know? Anything could come out of a, a gas pocket in the fat, in the silt, whatever's down there. You've got to take precautions of these things. Methane is the gas they fear the most. It's highly flammable, and in a cramped sewer tunnel, there's a danger of explosion. Now, it's certainly uh... getting a lot stickier. It's grabbing hold of my boots now. Very well contained. Yeah. The gases. If the level of methane reaches 3%, it's like a maze. They'll need to evacuate the sewer fast. Oh my goodness. Put steps in the water, sir. I'm trying to stay in the water. Low level alarms. Can I get a gas reading, please? Gas monitor readings are oxygen 20.23% 20 LEL on methane. The gas level is too high. Chris and John need to get out straight away. Abel? Yeah. We're abandoning the survey and we're coming back. Abandoning survey back. and they're heading back. We got 20 metres into the line and it started to solidify. Um, it was heavily built up as we got further in. Where we had to abandon the survey, it was about 30% full. Any further and the risk of the, the gas episode significantly increased because the fat was getting worse and worse and worse as we went up. Get out of this lot. Let me have a cup of tea. And then it's this thing's turn. Now the plan is to send in a remote controlled camera to determine the extent of the blockage. There's going to be some stuff in there and this is it. And finally, it's captured on poo cam, the very heart of a 50-foot fatberg. There you go, and there's oh, the, the there. mess at the end. There they are. So there's a hump, and that's the, and hump. That's the hump. This could be the start of the whole fat issue anyway. Now they know what they're up against, John calls in the ultimate fat buster. This bad boy has a high-pressure water jet strong enough to break up concrete. Here it comes. But there's one problem. I was not convinced I'm going all the way to the end. I think I'm hitting something more substantial. The hose is getting stuck and can't reach the main body of the fatberg. That's what's going to wrap around the jet. That's what wet wipes look like the time we get to deal with them. Um, we've tried jetting it. It's not working. No, it's not working. So we're going to have to get, out, get in and dig it by hand. We have to wave through there and um, break it up. Enough time has passed for the toxic gas to dissipate. Get your frock on. And as it's returned to a safe level, looks so happy putting them on. 
John can head back down and tackle the fatberg with some old-fashioned elbow grease and his special high-tech blockage removal device, a shovel. Just above Abel's screw there, please. Yeah. What is it, cement? No, it's just fat. All right, moving up. Right, let Lewis know we're going up the line. Okay. Right, John. God, what else? This is horrible. You all right, John? Oh, yes, mate, don't worry about me. There is no hard deposits here. This is just sludge. There's nothing there, there's no obstruction there, is there? No. Okay. Head back. Yeah. Back. It's 2 a.m. Well, we're coming back. After hours of shoveling, you know what? The blockage is breaking up and the sewer's finally starting to flow. Oh, get me the fancy bit. Now the team can use the high pressure hose to finish the job. The line is more or less clean. Now we've got the last little bits of tidying up to do. By the time we're finished, it'll be spotless. It's all in a night's work, but John takes it in his sludgy stride. I don't think we'd have it any other way. Across the UK, it's been a busy week for our teams of enforcers and grime busters, but it's not quite over yet. Back in Malvern, Jude and Dan are stewing over a brew. Tea. Solves. Tea Nothing. solves our problem, <laughs> but unfortunately not theirs. In days like this, I could do with getting a new job. Frustrating. They're waiting to see if the housing department can help them rehome the caravan campers. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye. According to Simon, he's got a flat. Okay. And he said. We're very well aware of him. He's got family in the area who have got housing. Um, he has got somewhere that he can go. Makes me a bit happier, to be honest. Whilst the first squatter already has a home, it turns out the second has been offered council accommodation but refused to take it. Back on site, the police are on hand to assist with the eviction. Hello! I'll go let you guys go and look, if that's all right. <laughs> There's no one, no one there. Thankfully, the campers have moved on. <laughs> and this caravan carry on can finally reach its lawful conclusion. It's just good to see it going. Long time coming. Almost time for another cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be really nice to come down here to see all the rubbish has been cleared, the caravan's no longer here. And these guys in these houses down here won't have this on their doorstep. It feels like a big relief that finally something that's been causing such a lot of hassle is gone. It sort of makes you feel a little bit like you won a war. <laughs> Sadly, we've just won the battle. Yeah. With the caravan crushed, the Grime Army lives on to fight another day. No excuse for fly tipping. No excuse for fly tipping. Keep our district tidy. Yeah. Next time, Wayne and Dan are back on the beat, and this time it's personal. Oh. There's another 50 or 60 bags down here. We will catch them. Environmental health uncover a takeaway disaster. 
this is really serious. If you don't get this right, you could kill somebody. That, yeah, that's the bottom line. And a grime-busting duo... Oh, my God. ..are called in for the mother of all clean-ups. That smells like something's dead. I don't know what it is. Oh, that's too much. 